2006 Seiko Atlas, the official watch of the guy who has just seen so much Bear grills that he wanders around the house casually drinking his own urine out of a coffee mug. Alright, um, so let's start small. Let's start with the name. Why? Because I think that the story of how this watch came to be known generally might offer some insight into its overall character. Although Seiko launched this watch in, with the model name Atlas, an adventurous name which brings to mind the type of dignified ruggedness encapsulated by the Ford F-150, it was quickly dubbed by enthusiasts as the Landshark. Now, if we take the latter appellation at its face value, it sounds aggressive, rugged, and so brimming with testosterone that it makes the 1966 East German shot put team look like the cast of Project Runway. But if we begin to consider what Landshark actually evokes, on one hand, an ancient, predatory aquatic animal that has to keep moving forward to survive, and on the other, an environment in which the former component can't possibly survive, what do we actually have? I mean, we have a stinking, rotting dead shark on a beach. To quote Shakespeare, I mean, loosely, what's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Well, if this name is anything to go on, it reeks of body odor, Cheetos, and Mountain Dew. I mean, seriously, this thing is the horological equivalent of scratching your crotch and then sniffing your fingers in front of the girlfriend you live in mommy and daddy's basement with. By any other name? What this is is an overburdened, kitsch-clad Seiko 5. All right, all right, but let's not blame the fans. The ridiculous nickname is simply the product of the watch itself, which looks like it was designed for WRX drivers with erectile dysfunction. I mean, it spews an image of masculinity like an out-of-control fire extinguisher. With a 42 millimeter case, which is 13 millimeters deep, this thing is about as subtle as two bulls wearing a trench coat in a feeble attempt to get into a china shop. The original band was a horrible rubber affair, which tugged at my arm hair, so rather than shave myself as clean as a sphinx cat, I switched it up for a Seiko metal link band. The overall size of this case means that the watch is heavy. Now don't get me wrong, I like heft in a watch, but this goes a bit too far. Also, the bulging back means that some wrist movements are not as pleasant as you might expect from a smooth underlying surface. Aesthetics aside, uh, the Seiko Atlas was launched in 2003, uh, around the same time that we reached peak permeation of support our troop stickers on the backs of Honda Odysseys, and the model was produced right up to around 2007, 8, in three variants, each basically distinguished by case finish and dial color. There was also a titanium special edition of the Atlas made, but this is such a different beast that we won't even discuss it here. Curiously, this watch was always retailed as a mid-range watch, even though it was basically a recast version of the much less expensive Seiko 5. This might be why, although it certainly found its following, one would still not be hard-pressed to find one of these in new old stock on eBay or in an Amazon shop for well below the original MSRP. Methinks that the sales were lower than both Seiko and the people who find themselves caught with these things would like for you to know. <sighs> right, under the hood. This watch is sporting, <laughs> get it, because Seiko Sport, the 7S36 23 Joule Automatic Movement. Now, the 7S36 was the Seiko 5 War Horse Movement that had been doing duty since 1996, a full decade before this watch was built. It generally saw service in smaller, more delicate timepieces than this, and unfortunately it was not replaced in 2005 when Seiko announced the new range of spring drive movements. This might account for the fact that the movement in this piece is really not standing up all that well. To start with, uh, to get it going from a full unwind is more difficult than getting an impetuous teenager out of bed on a Sunday. And perhaps this is because the mainspring is so overburdened that it's actually started to wear out. This issue is compounded by the fact that the Atlas is cursed with the usual Seiko pox of no stem winding. You pull this crown out and you're either setting the date and time, or you're spinning faster than a Beyblade while accomplishing absolutely nothing. I suppose, though, that this isn't an issue for the majority of users of this watch, who get more than enough kinetic energy flowing to the wrist while beating it to Google Images of Share.
Another problem that I've encountered with this movement is that it gets all gummy. Now I know what you're thinking. He's using cheap oil. You have to treat these things nice. Like my cousin in the backseat of a Chevy Suburban. But no, no. I had this problem with the factory finish, and not long after I got it. Now, I don't pretend to know what's causing this issue, but I think that it might have something to do with this internal rotating compass bezel. Now let me explain. The main crown on the Atlas screws down like a proper dive watch, which this is not, by the way, regardless of the audacious 200 meter water resistance claim as it lacks certification. This being said, the crown which governs the internal bezel is not a screw down, nor is it a pullout. I strongly suspect that what insulates this component is a rubber gasket, which I strongly suspect perishes, which I strongly suspect means that this piece is about as airtight as OJ's defense. Now, is this worth it for the compass feature? Absolutely not. This thing is more useless than a shake weight. Even if I were lost, and even if I did want to make use of this function, the second crown doesn't lock, meaning that it sort of flip-flops all over the place. Now, now, the only way that this is saving someone in the wilderness is if they are naked and afraid, and they want to make use of the absurd diameter of this wash to fasten the roof of a shelter. On the upside, the dial is super easy to read, and the loom on the hands lasts for a solid three hours, which is great if you want to take a dump in complete darkness. So, the verdict. Well, if you've been listening to me for the past whatever minutes, I think it's clear what I think of this watch. The problem is that it's giving the outward appearance of something that it is not. It wants you to think that it's the watch for those who live every day like it's day Z. But in reality, it's just the natural extension of those plastic compass watches you used to see around in elementary school. Much like the kids who wore those watches, this timepiece is just a little boy who wants to be big.